My name is Anna. I am a girl in high school who lives with my parents and little sister, Emma. Ever since I was little, I've always looked up to Emma. She's always been the most pretty and sociable girl no matter what room she enters. She seems to just have this light around her that can brighten up anyone's day. Everybody in my family just loves her. When I would have problems in math class, she would ace every exam. My parents have often said to her that she will conquer the world someday with all of her success. All of this aside, I still couldn't get over the fact that she was able to get a boyfriend before me. Even when I was dating a guy and brought him over to my house, they would instantly lose interest in me after seeing my sister. All they would have to do is start talking to my sister for a little bit before they ask me for her number. I can't even begin to tell you how hard it was to keep a boyfriend with Emma as my sister. Yeah, my own sister stealing my boyfriends. It wasn't easy to deal with. Emma was two grades below me, but we still went to the same school. That meant I always had to introduce her to my friends, and Emma never failed from grabbing all of the attention for herself. My friends would almost ignore me to talk to my sister. I've always been under her shadow, whether I liked it or not. But I have to admit, I was addicted to her smile and personality too. My sister, in her sophomore year of high school, decided to start an Instagram page. She always wanted to be a model and liked to be in the spotlight, so she decided that this is the best way to start. She instantly gained hundreds of followers within just weeks. It then turned into thousands of new followers monthly. The success wasn't limited to just followers. She ended up receiving a ton of business proposals to where she would promote their different beauty products. It all happened so quickly, I was astonished by her achievement and wanted to start an Instagram page for myself. But unfortunately, my photos weren't as good as hers, so my page didn't even reach 100 followers in total. Despite my bittersweet relationship with my sister, I've always liked when we would gossip to each other about boys. At the time, she was single and wasn't looking for a boyfriend. She wanted to just focus on education and developing her Instagram business. This mindset of hers, however, all changed out of the blue when she told me she received a message from some guy on Instagram. Hey, Anna, you'll never believe what just happened to me. This really handsome football player DM'd me on Instagram. At first I thought he would just be like all the other guys and send me a dick pic, but I thought to give him the benefit of the doubt anyways, I ended up spending over two hours just texting him. He's so sweet and we have such similar personalities and interests, it's felt like I've known him for years. I really want to meet him. You know, that sounds great and all, but you really never know with people on the internet. For all you know, he could just be pretending. He could even be a stalker. Just be careful with that kind of stuff, okay? Oh, come on, Anna, you're just being paranoid. I think you've been watching too many scary movies lately. Just please be careful, Emma. She now was spending all of her free time texting this new guy. It was like she was becoming addicted to her phone, but she seemed to be happier than ever. Me, on the other hand, knew that internet relationships can be dangerous because you never really know who's actually behind the other side of the screen. I also knew that my sister would ignore any red flags that might even come up with the guy because of how naive and gullible she is. This texting back and forth between them lasted for around two months. She told me the reason why they haven't even met in person yet because he just wanted to get to know her more. This was an excuse she was completely content with. It wasn't until a few days later till she came to me with what I believed was inevitable. I'd never seen her in such a broken state before. She could hardly speak with all the tears in her eyes. I immediately thought the guy on Instagram was to blame, but I asked her what happened anyways. She said something along the lines of, It's that guy I told you about. He's actually so evil. Please help me, Anna. I don't know what to do. I fell for his trap. Wait, just, just slow down a minute. What exactly happened? I sent him my nudes, Anna. I'm so sorry. I knew I shouldn't have done it, but he just seems so nice. Wait. What trap did you fall into? He wants a lot of money, Anna. He threatened to post these pictures online if I don't send him what he wants. I advised her to just send him the money and that maybe the situation will just blow over. She told her parents about what was going on. She would definitely get in trouble. 
Emma followed my advice, and for a while there was silence. But this silence couldn't always last forever. The guy messaged Emma, demanding the same amount of money. Only this time, he said he will now demand the money monthly, otherwise her nude photos would be posted everywhere. My sister had no other option than to comply, because she had become so popular in our city that a scandal such as this would forever ruin her image as well as her developing career. Thankfully, she had enough money from all her business promotions that she would be able to afford this little secret of hers. Again, I advised her to do what he wants, not to inform anyone besides me, because then her secret could spread like wildfire. Over the next few months, her mental health had a visible decline. She was so consumed by stress that the guy would post those pictures of her, she wasn't able to sleep. She was hardly recognizable anymore. Her once happy-go-lucky self had turned into nothing but self-isolation and sadness. Small cuts appeared all over her wrists from what I can only assume to be out of self-harm. It got to be so bad, Emma had to see a psychiatrist be prescribed antidepressants. Her grades were the next to suffer, and then finally, her Instagram too. I heard her crying every night into her polo, and she was rapidly losing weight and stopped smiling in her Instagram pictures, which caused her followers not to like them anymore. She ended up telling my parents about the whole thing behind my back. That's when everything changed. She first told them about the blackmailing, and then showed them the cuts on her wrists. While my mother cried, my father decided to act fast and drove Emma to the police station to make a report about it. The first thing the police did was track the location of the device that had been in contact with Emma all these months. It took a few days, but the police called us back with information that I think took everybody for surprise. The device that had sent those messages to Emma came within our own house. The police officers then requested to speak with her father alone. I found out later that the officers suggested that Emma was the one that had been sending those messages to herself and that this self-destructive behavior was a sign of serious mental illness. My mother later tried to talk to Emma about the possibility of it being true, to which Emma denied everything. One night, I overheard my parents talking about sending Emma to a psychiatric hospital. She was getting dangerously depressed and had pretty much stopped going to school at this point. She was just so consumed by her stress and anxiety, she couldn't do anything. When I heard my parents talking about all of this, I snapped. I burst into tears in front of them, and they were confused as to why. My mother asked what happened, and I told them everything. I was the one behind it all. That's why the police located the device in our house. It was my computer they were picking up. I just got so tired of living in her shadow. It's like no one even cared about me when she was around. Compared to her, I was always the bad apple in the family. Every time I tried to make something out of myself, Emma always took the spotlight with her success. I wanted her to feel how I always felt. Miserable. Getting the money from Emma was just a bonus to everything. I was the manipulator, and I was the one that took advantage of her. It was all easy, too. All I had to do was pose as this perfect guy for her to fall in love with. I already knew exactly what she was interested in and what type of personality she has, so it worked out perfectly. I just never expected it to get this far. I just really wanted her to look at life from the other side, where the grass isn't always green. My parents couldn't believe what I admitted to. They demanded that I leave their house immediately, and after their harsh words, they refused to even speak to me. It took almost a year for my mother to finally get back into contact with me and forgive me, but my father still says nothing, and to be honest, I think I deserve it. When my sister found out what happened, she refused to speak with me as well, and our relationship has never recovered from this incident. Fortunately, my sister was able to recover mostly from it. However, she has never fully been the same since. I really hope that one day I will regain her trust and that we can be sisters again. Hi, my name is Martin, and I would like to share with you my creepy Instagram horror story. 
I've never expected that protecting others could backfire on you so quickly. I've come so close to death, and I now realize how lucky I was to survive this incident. I hope you all hear me out till the end, and watch out next time you open up Instagram. So this story happened about four years ago, when I was still in high school. I was living in a rather small town in Pennsylvania, but there were many kids attending our school from nearby towns and countryside areas. I remember it as a fun time. I had many friends, and I was invited to many awesome parties. I also had a girlfriend back then, and I could say I was pretty happy with my life. But the good times changed when I met Christopher. He was a tall, well-built guy with a good head of hair, but he had these thick rimmed glasses. Those glasses made him look almost like a cartoon character. They were often falling off his nose and he would constantly try to put them back in place. It was funny to me. Sometimes even I was scolded by a teacher for laughing at him. Even though I was laughing at Christopher, we became friends from the very start. He actually transferred from another school because his father changed jobs and started a new one close to our town. On the day of his arrival, I was sitting alone at my desk at the end of the classroom. I just liked my personal space, so I rarely sat with anyone in my classes. When he entered, the teacher assigned him the only desk available, which just so happened to be the one next to mine. I greeted him and actually found him quite nice from the beginning. We talked a lot and even spent our lunch break together. It appeared that we had so much in common. He showed me his video game collection and told me he was really into League of Legends, something of which I played a lot back then. After some time, I invited him to my house for a sleepover. The day of the sleepover, we planned to grab some snacks and drinks from the store and watch movies on my bedroom couch. I had a big TV in my room so it was a perfect place to talk, watch TV, and play some games. And that's what we did. But before we started a movie, we gossiped a lot about her classmates and her conversation eventually drifted to the topic of girls. That's when I got really creepy vibes from him. He said something along the lines of, I think all those girls in her class look like sluts. They try so hard to look good by putting on makeup, but without it, they would just look like crap. <laughs> well, maybe. I, I don't know. I really like some of them because of their personality. They seem cool. Bro, are you blind? They're ugly as shit. I fucking hate those women. But at least I'm profiting out of their stupid ugly fuck faces. Wait, what do you mean profit from it? You gotta check this out. I've created this Instagram page where I upload photos of those ugly bitches and I get money from random guys from our school. They donate me money for every photo. They even make suggestions for me for which girl should be next. I just had to upload images of them in embarrassing or kinky situations. I mean, for example, I try to follow them around to the bathroom or hide in a girl's locker room just to get a perfect shot of them without a bra. It gives me so much excitement I earn so much cash because of it. <laughs> My heart started to race and I felt instantly unsafe when he showed me this page. There are many lewd photos of girls that I recognize from our high school. Many of the pictures were certainly taken from some kind of hiding spot, which I knew for sure was breaking the law. Some of the pictures were taken from above the restroom stalls, or even under it. They showed a lot of intimate parts, as well as things like defecation. I couldn't believe this harmless, nice guy I was friends with for quite a bit of time actually turned out to be such a stalker. I never wished any of those girls found out about this page, and from what I could see, it was very popular. There are many comments from some of my Instagram friends that I go to school with. They are mostly dirty comments, posted by some horny nerd guys that would never even have the guts to approach these women. I was horrified and scared. I could see a big smile on his face and didn't see any remorse from him that would even signify that he knew what he was doing was wrong. He was only laughing, and he got worked up from it. He really hated those women, and I didn't know why. I immediately wanted him out of my house, 
and came up with an idea to report it to the principal. But I decided to play along and pretend it's funny, because he was way bigger than me, and I didn't know what he would do to me after I tell him what I really think of it. Even my parents were out of town that weekend, so I really didn't know where to even seek help from. The rest of the day was spent playing games and watching movies. But I kept my guard up and was really anxious for the rest of the sleepover. The next day, I immediately went to the school and told everything to the principal. He instantly called the police and thanked me for my report. It was a serious misdemeanor and he told me that he certainly would be suspended. And I suppose that's what happened because I didn't see him the next day at school. But I noticed some of the girls in my classroom were absent too. I later learned from one of my friends that the officers revealed this page for some of the students to confirm that the photos were made without their knowledge or consent. I can only imagine how shocking and embarrassing that was for them. I even later found that some of those students experienced major trauma, which is why they stayed home from school. They had been crying every day for weeks on end. Obviously, the page was blocked by Instagram almost immediately after the police got involved. Upon further investigation from the school, Christopher was eventually expelled. For my own safety, I blocked him on every social media and his phone number. I hadn't heard anything from him for at least three months. That was until one Friday evening. I was chilling in my room, playing League of Legends, when suddenly I heard a loud noise outside my bedroom window. Chills ran down my spine. It sounded like someone stepped on a tree branch and broke it. The first thing that came to my mind was that it was an intruder. I was once again alone at my house, so I started to panic. My parents had this big new house, so there was a higher chance that it could become a target for any thieves. I ultimately decided that it is better to leave my house to protect my safety. I thought to pretend that I had to leave to go to the store. So I put my shoes and baseball hat on. And as soon as I left the house, I saw a figure in black hiding behind the bushes. I don't know why, but I suddenly froze and couldn't move. I only stared at this figure that began to now slowly stand up. I could finally now see who it was. It was Christopher, but I almost couldn't recognize his appearance. He had a lot of his hair chopped off and looked like he cut himself with a knife he was holding in his hand. Suddenly, he charged at me with the knife. I thought I was going to die in this moment. I literally didn't move an inch and didn't understand what was going on around me. He knocked me over and stabbed me in the stomach. He was yelling at me. Some of the words went like, You've left me no other choice than to kill you. You've single-handedly destroyed my life. I had never experienced something as painful as this. My mind finally realized what was happening and I instinctively threw his body off my own and onto the grass. I then stood up and ran towards my neighbor's house. Christopher followed suit, but he couldn't keep up with me. Thankfully, my neighbor had his front door unlocked. I didn't even bother knocking first. I just entered his house, slamming shut his door and locking it behind me. He was sitting in the living room, shocked and confused, especially when he saw blood coming from my stomach. I explained to him what had happened, and he called 911, asking for the police and an ambulance. I just remember feeling so dizzy. I fainted, but I awoke several minutes later, and when I did wake up, I was surrounded by police and the paramedics, while Christopher was apprehended and sitting in a police car. Thankfully. I didn't have any life-threatening injuries. I recovered from the stabbing wounds and was left with a nasty scar on my stomach. I testified against him, and after a few months, I found he got six years for attempted murder. Like many of the girls at my school, I was left with major trauma from Christopher. I still don't understand why he held me responsible for destroying his life when I was only doing what was right. I joined Instagram many years ago as a little girl. Every one of my other friends had Instagram, so I thought to download it as well just for fun. In the beginning, it was just like Facebook. 
I used it to contact people and see their posts on my front page. I really loved how Instagram worked and got addicted to it really fast. I then started to post my own pictures and noticed how I got the most likes out of the rest of my girlfriends. I've always known that I've been relatively attractive because I've always got the boys' attention in my school. I had a tall, slim figure with bright blue eyes and silky hair. At first, I had my profile private. My friends eventually talked me into making it public. They told me that it would bring in more followers, and more followers meant more likes, and more likes meant a higher opportunity to open doors for business proposals on Instagram. I followed their advice and made the switch. However, I didn't notice any new followers rolling in, so I eventually forgot about the whole thing. I thought maybe I wasn't meant out to be some kind of Instagram model. This all changed, however, when I went on a beach trip and decided to take some pictures when I was there. I ended up taking a few bikini pictures of myself, but it wasn't anything too revealing. All it mainly showed was some of my cleavage. I decided to post these pictures on Instagram, thinking only my girlfriends would see it. But all of a sudden, I received so many likes and comments from strangers. I forgot that I still had my profile public. I panicked at first, trying to delete the post as soon as I could, but when I noticed how my follower account was skyrocketing, I saw some major potential and thought that I could make some money off my newfound popularity. From then on, I was posting like crazy and my profile was growing faster and faster every week. It didn't take long before someone DM'd me with a business proposal. It was for a drink advertisement and after signing an online contract, I was supposed to travel to a specific photo shoot location and take pictures with their product. I was going to reel in a really nice amount of money for this gig and I was so excited that I immediately accepted the offer. I told my parents about it and they're really excited for me too. The photo shoot was supposed to take place in a bigger, more popular city than our own. However, I told them that the photo shoot was located within our own city so they wouldn't worry as much. When I arrived at the location, I noticed a really handsome guy in a suit. He introduced himself as one of the agents of the company and asked me if I would like to grab a drink and talk about the full scope of our arrangement. I was confused at first, but didn't think much of it and just assumed that this is the way business is done. He offered to buy my drink, to which I agreed to because nothing tastes better than a free drink. However, when I got down to a little less than half the glass left, I didn't feel good at all. My head began spinning and I think I passed out because I don't remember anything else from there. I woke up in what only I can assume to be some kind of dark basement. I couldn't see much, but the first thing I did notice was that I was bound and gagged. I could even scream for help if I tried. When my eyes finally became adapted to the darkness, I noticed that there are two other girls tied up in that room with me. Both of them were unconscious, and one of them looked like a corpse rather than a living person because of how pale she was. I'd never been so scared before. My mind finally realized what had happened to me. I was kidnapped and locked in a basement, and I didn't know what to do. The kidnappers, whoever they were, took my wallet and my phone as well, and I instantly regretted not telling my parents the actual location of my supposed photo shoot. I was completely hopeless. All I could do was stare at that basement door and wait for someone to open it. I was staring for what seemed to be like a few hours, but nobody came. All of a sudden, I hear what sounds to be like police sirens getting closer and closer till finally they were so loud I knew they were right outside the house I was being held captive in. I couldn't believe my luck. It was the happiest moment of my entire life. The police entered the house and eventually made their way to the basement. They untied all of us and the paramedics came to take us to the hospital. Thankfully, I was able to recover from all this physically and most of it mentally. The pale girl, on the other hand, wasn't so fortunate, as she later died. The officers that first responded to the scene eventually told me that they got an anonymous tip from someone saying that they spotted a man in a suit dropping pills into my drink. I also found out that the man who pretended to be an agent was actually connected to human trafficking and planned to smuggle us out of the country. 
This turned out to be the most terrifying day of my life, and I have never again accepted any business proposal that I had to do in person. So, this happened about four years ago. I'm 21 years old and no longer living in the neighborhood. I saw the neighbor in question yesterday when I was visiting my parents and that's when I remembered what had happened. A little bit of backstory. I live in a third world country. Our neighborhood is one of the worst ones but only for outsiders. We're actually pretty friendly towards each other. Even people fresh out of jail are typically pretty friendly. We got a lot of mental cases in our neighborhood, and Happy is one of them. My mother and I call him Happy because his name literally means happy, and we always joke around saying, Oh, Happy, are you happy? Because he's usually always smiling. That is, unless someone angers him, which is at least three times a year. I lived there for about 19 years, so I know how he is. Happy lives with his two brothers. One sells fruits and the other is a taxi driver. Happy doesn't work because he's mentally ill. I think he has some type of schizophrenia, but I'm not really sure which one. All I know is he just doesn't really function right. You can't really hold a conversation with him on sports or the news or really anything. His sentences just never make sense. I should also say that our country doesn't really take mental illnesses very seriously. We've got like three psych wards in the entire country. There's just no way of treatment for him, and whatever he is, people just refer to him as crazy. It's honestly really sad. My dad was actually friends with him and his brothers. Not anymore though. My dad used to give him money from time to time so that he could buy himself smokes. My dad knew that his brother, the taxi driver, needed to support his two kids in another city and the fruit seller barely sells his goods. Happy used to help carry the groceries sometimes and dad would give him some change for it. So since I was a kid, I only know the Happy who was very helpful and friendly and I always smiled at him and he would smile back at me. Well, when I turned 15 years old, he had completely changed. He still had the smile on his face and he would stand outside in different places in the shed all day long smoking. I used to wake up at about 7am to go to school and I would see him outside wide awake just smoking. He either didn't sleep or just woke up way too early. He would also walk some long distances as well. We would see him in a place where it takes us about half an hour to go by car, so imagine how long it took him by foot to get there. He seemed restless but mostly he would just stand there and smoke. It ranged from early mornings to very late at nights. The behavior change became pretty creepy. He would always stare at me and have a creepy kind of forced smile on his face. If I passed by him, he would always follow me with his eyes, to the point that he would walk backwards and keep staring. I glanced a couple of times to know that he does this every time. He would also walk backwards and then put his back up against the walls like he was hiding or something. His whole demeanor just totally changed. His anger and fits also became more frequent. He would shout some cursing phrases that made no sense whatsoever and walk angrily towards his house. Now to what actually happened to me. As I said, he would always follow me with his eyes and all that. I was 17 years old and out of any day, the day of the incident that I happened to be home alone. I didn't go out with the family because I had to study. He probably knew that I was alone because whenever my family left, I saw through the window that he was standing in his usual spot and just staring at them while they were driving off. Lunchtime came so I went to go buy some stuff to cook. I spotted him standing next to his brother that sells the fruit at the local market. I went to the market to buy some veggies and meat. The vegetables were pretty close to where Happy was, but the butcher was a minute walk away. As I paid the butcher for my purchase and putting it into my bag, I look up and there Happy was just staring at me. I didn't really think much of it, so I turned to the right and just kept walking towards the house, but he was right behind me yet again. 
I still didn't think much of it, again, because our houses are literally right next to each other. I passed his house and I was waiting to hear his footsteps to stop, but no, he was still right behind me. I look and his eyes are still on me with that really creepy smile. Still, I didn't really care because I just thought that he was going right to his spot that he usually stands at to light a cigarette or something. I never really felt like I was in any danger in my neighborhood, so I'm not really the type to get anxious easily, and especially by happy. I never really felt that he was the dangerous type, even during his rage fits, so that's why I really had no red flags. I entered the main door from the street and walked in the wide rectangular hall that had one door where an old woman lives, passing her door and turning right to climb the stairs to get to my house that was on the second floor. I heard someone enter the main door and in the hall. Again, I just thought it was one of the neighbors from the third floor. The footsteps were really quick though, so I thought that one of them was in a hurry, so I turned to look at the bottom of the stairs to see who it was and make some room so that they could climb fast. To my shock, it was none other than Happy on the bottom of the stairs. I stopped dead in my tracks and that's when my heart just started pounding really fast. I said, Happy, what are you doing here? With no response, he started bolting right towards me, taking two steps at a time. I started climbing faster too, and he caught my foot and I slipped. My right arm and knee were in so much pain from the fall. He was dragging me to the bottom of the stairs and that messed up my back as well. But with all the adrenaline pumping through my veins, I started kicking to release my ankle from his two hands and then screaming for him to get off. I also screamed out help, hoping one of the neighbors would hear me and come for my rescue. With my free leg, I started kicking his forearm so that he would let go and then kept kicking and shaking the other leg free as well. With a bit of luck, I finally got free. I couldn't turn though and I started climbing, afraid that he would follow to the house and God only knows what he would do if he got inside. I really just wanted to kick him and hopefully make him just lose balance and fall off the stairs to give me enough time to go inside my house. I kicked and kicked but with no luck and screaming. It felt like forever but it was probably about 5 seconds and I then heard the door of the old lady downstairs begin to open. Happy heard it too so he fled out of there. Happy passed her house so of course she saw him and she actually shouted at him but he didn't listen. She was calling my name and asking if I'm okay, but I couldn't respond. She popped her head up from the bottom of the stairs, still calling my name, but all I could really do was just cry in terror and pain. My elbow was bleeding and she started calling for my mom's name. I told her that nobody was home, so she asked me to get in her house so she could help take care of my bleeding. I told her it was okay and that I'd just do it myself, but she refused and kept calling me to go down, but eventually I just ignored her and hardly climbed those stairs and got inside. After about an hour or so, I got myself cleaned up, calmed down a bit, and cautiously went to the old lady's house. I knocked and she opened and I asked her not to tell anything to my parents because if my dad knew, he would probably literally kill the guy. I told her that Happy was just crazy and my dad shouldn't go to jail for someone who's crazy and he probably wasn't in his right mind. I eventually talked her into believing that he was out of his mind and that it's not that serious. She promised that she wouldn't say anything to my family and that was that. The next two years, he changed again completely. This time, however, he wouldn't even look me in the eyes. If I was walking and he was walking towards me, he would literally turn around and not pass near me. The first couple of months, I was really afraid that he would be waiting around a corner or something, but turns out he just doesn't want to be seen by me. Even after me moving out and us not seeing each other whenever I visit, and to this day, four years later, he still doesn't want to be seen by me. So happy. I hope you stay that way and don't hurt any other girls from the neighborhood. But what I really hope for the most is mental illness awareness in my country. I really hope that people start getting treatments and the right care. People like Happy really need it.